Okay, folks, gotta go pay the bill at the parts store. Hey, folks, this is Mike from KEI Fabrication. This is my LS swapped Mazda B2200. Design chair, I can do some highly classified scientific calculations. Okay, so progress so far has been roughing in these vertical cross members and spacing them out. And again, this whole project is kind of re engineering. The difficulty I have with these stake pockets, and they all pull themselves apart, I put them all back into shape, but they're not connected to anything on the inside except for this horizontal surface here and the vertical here. And this is wide open, it's not connected to anything. If you can see the bumps in the deck here, that's where the horizontal cross members come over. So what I've done is I've made this tube come up tangent to that vertical portion of the horizontal cross member. And I'll get two vertical welds on that horizontal cross member so when you try to push this bar in and out it's being resisted by that section of the horizontal cross member going this way um, I chose to use two by two here and two and a half by two and a half for the corner post um, mainly to get increased strength here but with the number or the quantity of these going rearward and all is they're really doing is providing as a backstop to the solid plate that's going to go down the whole side of this truck I've got the the wall here and the wall on the other side to resist pushing it out and uh, I went with uh, 120 wall here so I would get a little bit of reduced weight. Um, one of the things that I found is that the stake pockets were spaced for a rack body, but they're, they're not even symmetrical. So the first two are like 24 on center, the middle two are like 21, and then 24 and so forth. I'm going to actually be covering those up, and I'll show you why and how uh, down the road. Uh, so I made these logically spaced with these cross members as best that I could and I'm putting a corner post here that will tie into the headboard because the headboard is just 14 gauge and it's already pushed um, rearward so I gotta straighten it back out that vertical post will tie all that in and it'll be a nice rigid connection and we'll pick up some of the strength from the stake pocket and the bottom lip that goes this way on the side rails of the body. So I've got pretty much everything prepped. I ground the surfaces that the horizontal, I'm sorry, the vertical sidewall is going to be stitched into and um, where the pockets are going to be, the new, the new vertical tubes are going to go in and tie in. One of the more difficult things I'm going to have to do is, if, I don't know if you can see it, but that vertical wall right there, I've got to grind that and also grind this floor down here because the tube is also going to be contacting that and stitched into that. So um, I'm sharing the strength of everything that pre-existed and then tying it all in by adding a new uh, structural member. And the sheer wall of that solid plate, it's... Um, 14 gauge solid sheet that's going to be stitched into every one of these and the upper cross member is going to have such a tremendous amount of shear strength in it that um, this body is going to be very very rigid when it comes to uh, surviving the punishment of dumping heavy loads out of it so 
it might be overkill but uh, in the salvage industry um, you might as well be hauling crushed rocks you know uh, dumping them out of a, a crusher into the bed and then haul them around the way it bangs up the bodies it's uh, it's as abusive as the the sand and gravel industry so all right I'm gonna keep plugging away and uh, I'll prep the other side in the same manner I did here now that I've proven my concept out I'll go chop up the other side prep it like I did here and duplicate what's going on over here on the opposite side all right so the um, major component of the fabrication is coming along I had some bad weather and all this bright new shiny steel I wanted to make sure it didn't get rusted so I was able to sneak this thing into the shop just barely it was about a, an inch to spare on either side by the time we had to add the running boards in and all that so I've got all but one of the vertical posts cut and just resting in position they're not tacked yet I'm gonna put the last one in that's back here towards the tailgate and then I've just got to do the same thing for this side it's basically cutting the same length and putting it in place so here we go I got all the verticals tacked in place on both sides my plan is to take a sheet of the 14 gauge and put it into position trim it to length and just double check the parallelism of the lower rail to the upper rail I had the sheet sheared to size so that's the true test of my accuracy
So you guys might be saying, didn't you just do that? Well, what I did was I took the side that I fit over here to make sure it was compatible to this side to see how accurate my framework was. And I have to say I'm very, very pleased. So the other thing you might have noticed is the last time I lifted up with the overhead hoist, I used a C-clamp and then backed it up with some vice grips. Well, that was really sketchy and probably a stupid move. When I got it up there, I noticed that the only thing that stopped the C-clamp from slipping off the sheet was the vice grip. So I took a scrap piece of box tubing, tack welded it to the sheet. It acted as a perfect uh, receiver for the hook on the overhead hoist, and up it went. So the remainder of what I need to do and I, um, I already did it to this sheet, is every place where there's going to be a weld, I notched it to relieve it so the sheet would skip over the weld, and then when I go and stitch the sheet back in, I will stitch the sheet into the weld that's welded to the vertical tubing. I also made this fit so it drops down on the outside of the sheet that is the floor of the dump body and just trying to be fancy when it's all in position the outside edge well, I should say the inside edge of this tube is going to be perfectly flush with the sheet so when he's dumping stuff out the back there's not an edge here for it to hammer on the way that I sized it was and the offset of all those vertical tubes down the side is so that they were spaced in the thickness of the sheet. So not only down here will it be flush, but up at the top, when I stitch in the weld across the horizontal piece, it'll reach into the nose of the radius of the tube, just like what's going on here. And when I put the weld in, I'll have a nice fill it to weld instead of a butt weld or a overlap. So that worked out really good here. This sheet worked out almost perfectly and I sized it and cut it and notched it and relieved it for all of the welds on the opposite side. So I'm going to leave it here and then I'm going to go ahead and I have to relieve all of the areas along the bottom so that sits down all the way and that'll line up good at the top and then it'll also line up better down there. Right now the rear of it is raised up a little bit because you can see there's a gap right there and I have to compensate for that um, by relieving it so this drops down below that tack weld that's there and then that'll line that'll uh, settle the sheet down and on that vertical post back there um, when the other sheet this sheet's not long enough to reach all the way to the end I can only buy this in 10 foot sheets it's a 12 foot body so uh, I've got to cut two filler panels that are two feet long for that up there and that's the sheet of material that's right here so I'm gonna go ahead and relieve these so it sits down and while I'm at it I'm also going to relieve the areas along the top where there's going to be a weld along here uh, where all the verticals tie into the horizontal so I'll relieve those now then what that allows me to do is I can go in and fully weld all of the verticals into the horizontal and also the bed rail down below 
and all of the notches will be in place so when I slip the thing down other than maybe some fine tuning it'll be in time to just start stitching in these sheets for the sidewalls and then we're closing in on the sides of this project the next big project will be the tailgate which um, I'm dreading a little bit because you know it has hinges and it has a, a mechanism it is going to be a swinging tailgate so it's split in two like barn doors and it has the big tractor trailer style latch that latches at the bottom at the top I have a plan to do it I'm just kind of dreading it a little bit because whenever you got things that move around they're supposed to meet together properly um, if they're off at all and sag just a tiny bit it's just not going to look good and it's not going to perform well so uh, for now I'm just going to focus on these vertical sidewalls and then I'll put the filler panels in and I will final weld all of the verticals into the horizontal and the bed rail and then we have some more reinforcing that's going to happen along the bottom and I'll show you that when the time comes. Okay so I've got prior to putting this up I fully welded all the verticals to the horizontal same thing with the lower bed rail and now I'm stitch welding in about every 12 inches or so this panel and I'm just going maybe a half or three eighths long stitch at a time just to prevent shrinkage um, so one of the things I wanted to make sure is that when I attach the lower portion of this vertical side to the floor is I wanted to make sure that there was no gaps because I really initially I know this thing's going to get beat to death but when the customer comes and picks it up I just want them to be pleased with uh, the attention to detail so um, I've checked the straightness of this and it is uh, I want to match it obviously I spaced all of the verticals off leaving a gap just specially for the thickness of this vertical wall so uh, I, I watch a lot of channels one of them project brew peg which is took a sunken fishing vessel and is completely refitting it and restoring it to become a research vessel well it's a steel boat and they've done a tremendous amount of fabrication they've had welders from all over New Zealand come in and assist them and one of the things that uh, I learned from them and kind of refreshed my memory on it's a little dark over here hopefully you can see it is the use of wedges to hold material where you want it. so I just pulled the wedge out in this piece of angle iron and what happens is my vertical wall is a good sixteenth of an inch away from the floor of the bed. So, so all I did was take an old splitting wedge that I actually found in the dirt outside and it's just enough weight to push that angle iron in and hold this against it while I stitch it in. So don't forget to use your wedges. Thanks Brew Peg for showing me that and um, helping me apply that to my situation. Okay, so in case you haven't figured out, the reason why I went through that exercise is my welding torch was, uh, you know, over four feet below the deck where I'm working. So originally I thought, well, maybe I'll put it on this lift. And I said, well, wait a minute, I have another lift. So I slid it out from under, wheeled it across as you saw, jacked it up. So I probably gained um, three feet of height, which probably gave me another three feet of horizontal reach with my torch so 
Uh, hopefully that was worth the effort. I'll let you know in a few minutes. All right, just a quick update on the abrasives I bought. This is a Benchmark Adhesives 40 grit flapper wheel. Uh, they are made in China, which uh, these are the only ones I could find that would sell them in bulk quantity off of eBay, so I did. I have to say, if you look at the comparison here, this is a brand new one. This is the one I just took off. This thing was still working great all the way down till I've, I've gotten into the hard wheel part and I've only got just a tiny bit of this left. This is working good all the way to the end. So I'm actually kind of impressed with the performance of these for a China made. It is way, way better than the Diablo Home Depot ones or the Harbor Freight version. So, um, you know, you got to give credit where credit's due. It's a decent ad abrasive wheel. These uh, Bruller 40 thousandths wheels, they're German made. And um, I'm also impressed with the performance of this. Um, I've actually had to adjust the height of the sheet, and I'm about to do it again. You can see the um, sheet laying on the, the deck of the trailer there. Uh, not the trailer, but the deck of the truck body. Uh, I've actually used this to trim the length of the... Um, the entire length of the sheet, which is uh, nine and a half feet. Um, I was able to do the entire length with one wheel plus um, the height of it, which is 42 inches. So you're talking almost uh, 13 feet worth of linear cut with this wheel. Um, and it's uh, 14 gauge steel, 75 thousandths thick. So uh, they seem to last pretty well. So far, so good. And the update on the abrasive wheels, I bought a couple packages of uh, 10 of the DeVault wheels. Um, again, these things outperform anything from Farber, Harbor Freight or the Diablo brand from Home Depot. So I'll probably continue to buy these uh, because you can buy them in bulk off of eBay. The shipping's free. And um, German made, made in Canada, made in China. So anyway, just a quick update on abrasives. Very happy with my purchases here. And now I'm going to get to work.
All right, so I've got this uh, vertical wall all stitched in. It's uh, permanently done um, along the horizontals and the verticals on both sides. You saw me cut out the little patch panels for the end caps. I've got these a little bit larger plates and they're going to go up here like so. I'll stitch those in in just a minute and I'm leaving these holes if you will, the doors, so I can actually access things. These are pretty straightforward panels so I'll do those um, last and uh, I'm going to continue to leave those open while I'm working. I'm just trying to get the majority of the welding done. We got a nice spectacularly cool day today, no humidity, so I'm just burning wire as much as I can to get this out of the way. Just going to finish stitching in the uh, outside of those horizontals and verticals. The box uh, has been capped off up there. And I'm going to continue to burn some wire. I've kind of it's really tight in here. I can't do any welding outside cuz uh it's blowing the wind is blowing pretty severely. So definitely don't want to take the chance of having uh some porosity type welds and having to uh redo anything. So uh, I'm just working with my tight tight cramped quarters here and um I'm just going to continue to start finalizing the uh, installation of that panel on the opposite side. 